Hello, this is David Mandel, and in this video I want to talk a little bit about uh, Linux and other Unix distributions. What a distribution is, is in the, well, the first thing to remember is that Unix is not really a single operating system, but it is a family of similar operating systems. Um, many of which include proprietary Unixes such as IBM's AIX, um, what was Sun Solaris, maybe Oracle still supports that, I don't know. Uh, SGI had a version called IREX, uh, Cray had a version, um, or maybe has a version. Um, let's see. SGI had a version called IREX. Um, actually, no, almost nobody uses the name Unix. Unix is the name of the operating system, but that was a trademark of AT&T, and they didn't really permit anybody else to use the name Unix, um, So, or very many people. I guess SCO at one time, Santa Cruz Operations, used the name Unix. They were licensed to use that name, but they've gone bankrupt and been out of business for a long time now. So use, most Unixes are something that usually end in the letter X. Okay, Solaris is an exception. Uh, there's probably others as well. Um, okay, the um, and Distributions are most relevant when we talk about Linux because Linux is so free and open there's no one company supports Unix. It's just a lot of software that sort of floats out on the internet and um, somebody has to figure out what software they want to include, what software they don't want to include. There's the operating system kernel, the core of the operating system which is the Unix kernel and really, or Linux kernel, and that is uniquely Linux and really uh, that's about the only thing in Linux that is truly Linux. Everything else is just things people choose to throw in. Um, some people really don't think you should use the name Linux for the things that we do, but the tradition is Linux is the Linux kernel plus a nice collection of software um, that people understand to be Linux. Um, okay, somebody has to put that together though. That is, well, in the newspaper business, we have people that put newspapers together. They get stories from reporters. They get stories, they buy stories from here. They get stories from there. They get stories from the wire press. And they put it all together in a nice package that they call the edition of a newspaper. In the Linux world, somebody has to put it together. And there are people and groups and companies that do do that. And um, instead of calling these editions, we call their end results distributions. And there are lots of different distributions of Unix, or I'm sorry, of Linux. Um, most Unixes really only have one, two, three distributions or versions. In the case of Linux, there's hundreds, thousands. Let's look at a few of the more popular ones. Now, if you're taking my uh, Linux Systems Administration course, you'll see the first lab, likely the first lab, um, ask you to get a Linux distribution. Any good Linux distribution will do. The textbook is usually based on something like Fedora, but I don't care. Any distribution will do. Any good one, uh, Ubuntu, Fedora, Mint Linux, or Linux Mint, OpenSUSE, Debian, so on and so forth. And then it gives you a few sites that you can look at to see, to study Linux distributions. And it says, take a look at these. OK, well, we're going to look at some of them ourselves here. Let's go back here, go to our friendly internet here. 
And um, in the uh, lab assignment, I gave you several sites to look at. We're going to look at a couple sites here just as we talk about Linux distributions. OK. Let me get my picture out of the way here. And the first site we'll go through to is Wikipedia. Wikipedia has a nice little article on Linux distributions. Um, I will let you study that yourself. The URL up here is this. Um, and uh, you're welcome to look at it and read it. There are so many distributions that there are sites that just study Linux distributions. Um, Anybody and everybody has put together a distribution. Indeed, in the early 2000s, I was putting together three Linux distributions, which went under the name Netual. Um, it was an unsuccessful startup company, but, um, but it was a lot of fun. And uh, I think it was a good idea. But uh, we had a high-tech recession at that time, and I got caught in the middle of it. So. It was a startup that didn't start up. There is one site called DistroWatch. DistroWatch looks at Linux distributions. That's really all they do is to look at Linux distributions. Here's a list of a few of, well, this is our front page. It's a list of a few of their distributions. Most of these I've never heard of. Um, OK. Here's a list of their major distributions, or what they consider to be major distributions. Let's see, Linux Mint. That is a pretty good distribution. It's based on Ubuntu. I believe I've installed Linux Mint. I've actually never used it, so I can't say too much about it. Um, uh, but we've, I've had students that have used it. It looks like a decent distribution. Ubuntu is a very popular distribution. Uh, it's a good distribution. I've had clients that use uh, Ubuntu, so I've supported Ubuntu. Um, and uh, it's, it's very popular. It tends to be very popular among small businesses and home users and people of that type. Um, it's easy to use. It's a good distribution. And there's many variants of that. Because once there's a distribution, then somebody will take the attitude of, well, it's not perfect. But if we add this and take this out and add that, we'll get the perfect distribution. So there's many distributions which were based on Ubuntu. Indeed, Ubuntu itself is based on Debian. Fedora. Um, Fedora is a distribution which is the original Fedora was a distribution called Red Hat. And then when Red Hat became a commercial company, um, the open, fully open source version of Fedora, uh, of Open Hat, had to use a different name. And they used the name Fedora, which is, well, actually, if uh, the hat that the founder, one of the founders, Bob Young, use, uh, always wears is a red fedora. So that's where the name came from. It's a good, excellent distribution. We usually use a book that is based on fedora. Debian. Debian is a fully uh, community developed and supported distribution. Fedora. And Debian, because everything is purely open source in it, people v p feel very free about basing distributions on it because they there's an assurance you can't get into trouble if you base something on Fedora because you're not, at least you can't get into copyright trouble or anything because everything in Fedora is, is clean. Um, the result is many, many distributions, such as Ubuntu, are based on Fedora. Or, I, I'm sorry, are based on Debian. Um, I hope what I said was all about Debian there, because uh, Debian is the distribution. It's a good distribution. 
it might be a little harder than some to install and use, but it's a really good distribution. OpenSUSE. OpenSUSE is a distribution um, originally built in Germany. Um, and it happens to be the distribution that I generally use, although I use a lot of distributions. But the distribution that's on my desktop, the distribution I'm using to do this video, is indeed OpenSUSE. Um, it says here someplace that it was actually based on SLS distribution. I really did not know that. Prior to using, well, back in the early days of, um, the, of Linux, back in the early, early 90s, the first distribution I ever used was one called SLS, Soft Landings Software, um, by a company that was based on Vancouver Island in uh, British Columbia. It had bugs. It had problems, but um, but they said they had bugs and problems, and it was wonderful compared with, to the commercial version of Unix I was using at the time, um, which was SCO Unix. And um, the the first Linux I used was there was all sorts of warning statements how um, um, beta test software it was and not ready for prime time and it was still better than most of the commercial alternatives so um, I, and twenty five hundred dollars cheaper so Arch Linux is a uh, simple Unix Linux distribution it's quite popular I can't say I've had much personal experience with it but it's got a very good reputation Okay, I'm going to probably skip through most of these, but CentOS I should mention. CentOS is kind of a variant of Red Hat Linux, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, brought back into the open um, source to be fully open source. I think most of uh, its users, it has a huge following with the high-end scientific community that does massive, uh, massively parallel supercomputing. And uh, if you go to the national or international supercomputing conference every year, you will find a lot of CentOS. Um, otherwise, you probably don't see a lot of it. But it's a very good distribution. This distribution here, Magint, is based on Mandrake Linux, which was a distribution coming out of France that was very popular for a few years. Actually, we had a lot of Oregonians that worked for Mandrake, and um, unfortunately, they uh, crashed and burned probably about the same time my distributions did. Slackware is a nice distribution. Um, I probably don't recommend Slackware anymore unless you're just playing around with distributions. But Slackware is interesting because um, um, it's an early, early distribution. I think that is the distribution I used after giving up on SLS. And I used it for a number of years. It's had its good years and its bad years. Um, but it seems to be a steady, long-lasting distribution. It is created and uh, maintained by Paul Volkering, uh, who's quite respected in the Linux community. OK, FreeBSD is listed here. And I should mention FreeBSD is sort of strange because FreeBSD is not a Linux. It's an alternative open source Unix. Um, that uses a totally different kernel than Linux. Um, it happens to use the kernel. The FreeBSD kernel is what's used as the basis of Apple's OSX um, operating system. And um, in a way, it shouldn't be under Linux kernels. But the Linux community, well, the open source community, some of them do. Um, FreeBSD 
or some of the other alternatives to that, NetBSD or OpenBSD, and some of them do Linux. FreeBSD actually does have two or three different uh, distributions of FreeBSD. There's the basic FreeBSD, and there's one that I've used most often is probably called uh, PCBSD, which is a um, I think a distribution of FreeBSD. And then there are some other um, BSD variants which use still other kernels. So they're not FreeBSDs and they're not Linuxes, but they are Unixes. Uh, OpenBSD, NetBSD, and DragonflyBSD. And although I've used Dragonfly BSD, I'm not quite sure how the kernel relates to the other kernels. I actually thought it was using a, I thought it used one of the other kernels, but here it says it's an alternative, so maybe it is. Okay, that gives us an idea of what's going on there. Let's look at another one of these here that I recommended, uh, Linux. This comes from linuxweeklynews.net. Uh, they've got a section on distributions. And um, we'll just look at this very briefly. Oh, there is one other distribution I should mention. We'll go back here, and I will mention this, not because um, you should use it, but I want to mention that there's a distribution that I use a great deal called Nopix. Nopix is a great distribution. I always have a copy of it in my in my um, um, laptop bag because I use it for as a teaching distribution. I use it as a diagnostics distribution. It's what's called a live distribution and. It's probably not an ideal distribution to learn Unix systems or Linux systems administration from. Um, so I would not recommend it for that use. On the other hand, it, you can do so much with it that I always have a copy of it in my laptop bag. In fact, I usually have a copy of it on a thumb drive in my pocket, so along with my pocket knife. So it, it's very, very useful distribution. Um, OK, this is kind of interesting because it breaks distributions down a little bit by general purpose distribution, education specific distributions, ones that have educational software in them, uh, country specific distributions, um, other special purpose distributions. The distributions we've talked about so far are all what I would call general purpose distributions. However, um, there are a lot of special purpose distributions, distributions that maybe are uh, run particularly well in a certain language like Thai or Indonesian. Um, others are, although most of those support English too, and be, you know, be aware that sometimes some of these distributions get labeled as the French distribution or the German distribution, and their English support is 100%. So, uh, you know, Nopix as an example is developed by a couple Germans, but it's a, you know, they, they live in California, so uh, it, it's, uh, you know, works fine in English, likewise with OpenSUSE. Um, but there are a lot of special purpose distributions, distributions that maybe work on certain types of handheld devices, uh, distributions that are meant to be internet firewalls or internet routers or um, there's a couple distributions that are meant to run, um, oh, well, I can't, uh, to, meant to be P, uh, telephone PBX systems. Um, there's a lot of distributions that are really special purpose. And 
I really think that's important. That's what I was trying to build was a lot of special purpose distributions so that you didn't so that it didn't take so much time for a person to get a general purpose distribution and cut it down and customize it for a specific use. The idea was these would you install it, it's on the PC and the system's almost up and ready to go with very little very little expert intervention. Um the other thing is there are distributions for various uh, architectures. The architecture we mainly talk about in my class is the Intel or AMD architecture, the normal Linux on a normal PC. But you can also run Linux on a lot of handheld devices, on telephones, on, um, you know, tablet PCs on little tiny boards like th this is a Raspberry Pi and it is running on here is installed the Raspberry distribution which is a bit like um, Fedora only it's all been recompiled to support in, instead of supporting an Intel processor it supports an ARM chip um, along with the drivers and stuff needed for this machine. And these machines are great for, oh, driving robots, um, um, putting in field operations like to control um, irrigation systems as a farmer, you know, these are great for controlling irrigation systems, um, um, oh, sensing when temperatures are getting down towards freezing and taking some sort of action based on that. Um, and uh, that's really the future. Okay. I guess another type of um, distribution is the live distributions. Live distributions run directly off of a DVD or off of a thumb drive and um, they're used a lot in um, computer diagnostics. Here's another site that has information about distributions here someplace and another list yet yeah, another list of distributions none of these lists are complete by any means and most of them have a lot of out-of-date distributions as well as um, good up-to-date distributions uh, here's a description of Onopix right here. Is a bootable Debian-based CD, actually DVD or CD, depending on whether you want the big one or the little one, with a collection of GNU Linux software and automatic hardware detection. It is necessary to. It is not necessary to install anything on the hard drive. Okay, that describes it. And let's see what else. Oh, here's a whole list of rescue um, distributions. Distributions to use if you have a computer that's in trouble and you need to rescue something. Um, Linux distributions on floppy disk. Uh, specialized distributions. Well, Distributions for the PowerPC chip, embedded Linux, uh, for use in robots and various industrial devices, although many Linux distributions are used in that setting. Um, the um, Asterix is the uh, PBX system. Um, okay. Here's another list here of live. This is a list of purely live distributions. And you can see here that it goes on and on and on and on of live distributions. Um, I will say I like to use ones that are based on Nopix or based around Nopix because it's my feeling that many of the live distributions um, there's 
hundreds of live distributions, but many of them have been made up just to be kind of advertisements for their distribution. So like um, the live distribution for, say, Ubuntu, in my mind, it runs fine. I've used it. Or for OpenSUSE, it runs fine. I've used it. But in some ways, it strikes me that they want to give me enough uh, of a sample of the distribution, then I'll say, okay, reformat my hard disk and put uh, SUSE down or put Ubuntu down. Nopix is built to run as a live distribution and be used as a live distribution. If you install it properly on hard drive, what you get is basically Debian. And um, so Nopix has a lot of special features that makes it perform well as a live distribution. Okay, the um, let's go back here, and um, I guess that ends our video. That is everything I have to say. So, bye bye.